What's good, y'all? It's your boy, Rogue Live Bagger. Uh, just want to talk to y'all a little bit today um, about my 2017 Rogue Live Custom. And I want to um, drop a few nuggets uh, about the audio install and about the DSP. Um, when you're installing your new audio equipment on your bike, when you're installing aftermarket equipment, and you're getting rid of a lot of the, uh, the OEM, the manufacturer equipment, uh, it's, it's very crucial when you're spending a lot of money on new audio equipment, it's very crucial to protect your investment with a DSP. Um, I have here uh, the Rockford DSR1. Uh, I'm not saying that it's the best D uh, DSP, but I'm saying this is a pretty, this is a pretty good one. And one of the reasons why I went with this DSP is because I feel like this is the one that is the most user friendly. I did a lot of reviews on different DSPs. Um, also, not only was it user friendly, it's also at a good price point as well. Uh, these Rockford DSR ones usually go for around 250. Uh, some of y'all might think that's a little bit expensive, but when you're looking at all the different things you can do with this DSP, I mean, it is very convenient. It is very amazing. Uh, the different types of the technical capabilities that it does, um, being able to control your crossovers. If you don't really know what crossovers are, uh, the crossovers are basically, crossovers meaning that you can restrict certain frequencies like bass frequencies on your speakers. Like if you're running subs, you can restrict your, your subs, which is usually um, most people buy those. You typically want to buy those for bass. You want those to pay your low bass frequencies. And if you have a crossover connected to it, a lot of times your speaker, those speakers really technically to a certain degree are full range. They All speakers have a wide range of frequencies. But the beautiful part about the crossover and the, uh, cause a lot of speakers come with crossovers, but the beautiful thing about an external crossover that's inside the DSP is it allows you to control specifically which frequencies you want that bad boy to play. You got your subs in the back and you're trying to tweak it and you're trying to get a specific sound it's going to help you hit the hammer right on the head where you want that low bass frequencies to play uh with your coaxes or your components with your tweak with your tweeters if you want your tweeters playing real high frequencies okay or if you don't want them to play such high frequencies if you want to put them on high pass where they're playing 18 19 20 thousand hertz if you want a band pass where you don't want to play uh, past 17, 18,000 hertz. You don't want those high frequencies. Maybe you want the mid range. I mean, but that's all depending on your, your particular preference on what sound that you're trying to achieve. So what I will say about this bike is, let me show you guys something really quick. So uh, I had the, I had the ground zeros, I had the GZs, I had the GZs put on my, I had the GZs put on the bike last week. Um, also, let me show you this. I had the ground zeros, put, I had the ground zeros put on here. Uh, I had the ground zeros put on here just, um, just a week and a week and a half ago. And man, when I say they play bright, they play pretty loud. Do not let people discourage you. Um, I have buddies that told me that they were gonna go with horn, they were gonna go with tweeter horns, um, they were gonna go with components. Me personally, preferably, I decided to go with coaxels because I did my homework, I did my research, and I usually do a ton of research before I make an investment on anything. And when I say I do not have absolutely no envy, I have absolutely no regrets. These GZs, when I say they pound, this is a full range coaxel speaker that uh, is the specs on it that the manufacturer says that it'll pay from 50, 50 hertz all the way up to 20,000 hertz. And man, when I say these play awesome bass, when I say they thump, they play, they play pretty damn well. They play pretty damn low. Um, of course, it's not a sub, it's not an eight, it's not a 10. So you're not gonna get a whole lot of low bass sub frequencies. But when it comes to mid bass, when it comes to low bass and some of those, uh, it's on a cusp of some sub frequencies, but they play pretty good bass and they play the mid range and high ranges even 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 better they they hurt my ears um in the bags in the bags we got um the diamond coax subs the uh, ms69 cx um 
This is a six by nine and from, from Diamond, and they say that this is a coax sub, meaning that it's gonna help play lower bass frequencies. This thing sounds phenomenal. I actually believe that I'm not running enough power to this. So right now, this is a basic, this is a basic four speaker setup because before when I first got the bike last year, it was just two speakers running off the hog tunes, running off the manufacturer setup. And I wanted to take it up to a whole nother level. I wanted to take it up to stage two, but even with my stage two setup, I wanted the stage two setup to sound phenomenal because what I'm really trying to do is I'm trying to build a foundation because I do plan in the future to install subs in my bags and um, also or, my, or mid bases in my bag or subs. Uh, possibly one day I think I might even do some eights in the crash bar. I'm still on the fence with that. I haven't made my mind up yet, but I know I am building a block. I am building a strong foundation in blocks of building a strong uh, SPL competition level bike. And I'm just starting out with good foundation with quality, high fidelity sound. And I want you guys to know if you're thinking about a good um, a good speaker for the price, I don't think nobody has better prices uh, than Ground Zero. And that's when it comes to, I've done research on a 6.5s, I've done research on the eight the eight inch mid bass. I've done um, even they even have an eight inch they even have an eight inch coaxial. Ground Zero even has a, a, not only do they have mid bases, they have a, they have a ten inch coaxial as well. And their price their price point is phenomenal. I think when it comes to bass, um, Ground Zero and PRV, their price points on their on their products are phenomenal. Of course, there's some, I think that there's some. There's some um, products out there. There's some um, some stuff out there. You got Bama, you got Euphoria, and of course, you know you can never you can never leave Hertz out of the conversation. But the thing is, you're gonna come. That's gonna come with a much higher price point. Okay, me personally, I like the I like I like having nice stuff. I like buying quality, but at the same time, I like to be able to get the gratuity out of everything that I put my investment into. You know what I mean? When I put good money into it, I want to get I want to get the great I want to get the value and I want to get the quality out of what I put my money in, what I invest in. So, also, the reason I took the fairing off, the reason we have the fairing off, is because we was getting some we was getting some clipping. I was running it; it was getting some clipping. So uh, I reached out to Carlos at MVS Audio, and he gave me some tweaks. Uh, shout out to Carlos in Jersey. If you haven't followed him, go try go follow him right now. NVS Auto, uh, he's the truth. This dude is the GOAT. Uh, he showed me how to tweak the gains on the Sound Digital. That's the uh, that's the amplifier that we're running on here. The Sound Digital Evo X 1200.4. Um, and yes, the 1200.4 are running these four coaxial speakers. Okay, uh, at four ohm, we're not necessarily getting um, not getting four. We're not getting 300 watts per channel. We're getting 198, um, and that's at 12 volts. With the bike running at 14 at 14 volts, we're getting around 200, about two. It's over 200, about 220 watts per channel. Um, also, the beautiful thing about this about uh, about your DSP is the guy that I initially originally had do the install. Um, I really believe them guys did. They did a really good job on the build quality, but I don't really think they really knew. They really knew very on a high level of how to uh, how to tune the bike, how to really tune it because. To me, the overall output wasn't what I felt that it should be, considering that I went with a 1200 watt amp. I went with a 1200 watt amp because I wasn't playing no games. I want this thing to beat when I'm on the highway, when I'm at, when I'm at 70, 80 miles per hour, when I'm really pulling back on the throttle, when I'm really opening it up, I still want to be able to hear my music over my pipes, okay? So, it was clipping a little bit, so what I did was, we turned, we actually turned up the gains. What we actually did was, um, on the input level, we actually flips, we actually flipped the input level over to, we actually flipped the input level over to high. Okay, we flipped the input level on the DSR one over to high, and then we tweaked the gains on the on the um, on the amp. A lot of people feel like the gains. Um, a lot of people have this thing with gains where they feel like gains increase volume. I'm gonna say this. To a certain degree, the myth, the myth is true. Uh, gains will equivocate to uh, it will equivocate to power, but it's not a volume knob, it's a power knob. Because of course, um, 
When you open up your gains, now you're allowing your amplifier to match the amount of power that's coming from your head unit, that's coming from your radio, okay? But if you have your gains turned down, that means that your amp isn't gonna match that power, okay? So you understand that you can't get your, first of all, your amplifier isn't gonna reproduce power if it's not getting enough juice, if it's not getting enough power from your, uh, from your battery and from your circuits and everything. So you gotta be able to run juice, you gotta be able to run power to the amplifier, and the more you open up those gains, the more power that your amplifier is gonna allow to come in, okay? Which, an end result is, that's gonna give you more vibe, that is gonna give you more power, okay? Now, here's the catch. That comes with a catch, though, okay? Because I know some of y'all thinking, man, you're gonna blow your speakers to smithereens. On the, uh, on the tail end of that, we went inside the DSP and opened up the, uh, opened up the app, and I carefully tuned back. I actually did a band pass. I actually did a band pass on the six by nines. Okay, and also um, I actually I actually tweaked the high pass filter on the GZs on the front. So we took them up, I scaled them up to 100, 100 hertz. They're at 100 hertz. I might even pull them up a little bit more considering I got the gains turned up past halfway. So um, I just wanted to try the guys to keep that in mind that these DSR1s do come in handy. They, these, these things are amazing. You can help, it'll help you tweak when it comes to your clipping. It'll help you tweak, it'll help you tweak that. It'll help you achieve that high fidelity sound. So uh, before, you know, just, if you have any questions, if you have any comments about, about tuning, about the DSP, about what speakers you select, if you have any questions, about the road glides, street glides, baggers. I'm pretty knowledgeable about baggers in general. Uh, just don't forget to hit the uh, comments, hit the likes, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll holler back later, y'all.